meeting is being recorded. Hello to all Bucks, Saints, Falcons, and Panthers fans. That can only mean one thing. It is time to talk NFC self on the Big Deep Podcast. Before I bring in Alice, please stop, like, and share the Spanky Spanky Sports YouTube page where you can hear all the content, all the pods, all the noise in the background. Also, check out the Big Deep Podcast on Spotify and Apple. So, uh, back from changing times that are playing this parrot. Uh, Alex, uh, are you ready to talk some NFC self? I am always ready, Dylan. Glad to be back. You know, it's me and Paco today. I'm just sitting here playing with my parrot, it sounds like. But um, yeah, no, I can't wait. You know, it's, it's, I don't know if you can call it the most exciting division in football right now, but, um, you know, either way, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the divisions that it's, and it's the division we're going to be talking about today. So I'm ready to get into it if you are. Yeah, maybe the most, maybe one of the most interesting quarterback scenarios because, I'm not sure any one of these teams has got an answer beyond this year. I mean, this year, yes, but beyond this year, that might be another question. So how about the uh, Tampa, Bay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers? How about them? Uh, I mean, there's not a lot to say about the, the Bucs, in my opinion. I mean, I feel like with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we know what we're getting. Obviously, Brady is back. Um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be Gronkless at least at the start of the season. You know, who knows if uh, Brady gets uh, gets a bug in his ear to get Gronk back for the second half of the season. I feel like a lot of people are betting on that to happen, whether it does or not. Jury's out. We will just have to wait and see. But, um, you know, it's, it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We know they're going to have a great offense. We know their defense is solid enough to make it to a Super Bowl, to win a Super Bowl. It's an all-around great football team, great coach, a great coached football team. I mean, what's not to like about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this season? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because there are two things that concern me. One, you mentioned great coaching staff. There is a slight change. Top Bowles is taking over for Bruce Aaron. So now how we'll have in a defense of my head coach, effect Brady, even on bottom and left, which is still the OC. And secondly, I'm not worried about Mike Evans because finally a more, more consistent, productive receiver the last seven or eight years than Mike Evans. But how will the Bucks integrate Chris Godwin when he comes back from his torn ACL? Because I keep hearing like week four, week five for when Godwin could be back. And uh you know, Brady needs time, and, and, you know, Tom Brady is not like any other, not like most quarterbacks. He he wants time, and then you wonder how the Bucs are going to integrate Brady with Godwin, because seemingly when Godwin gets good, Godwin and Evans are hot, the Bucs offense becomes so much harder than just one of those guys going hot. Yeah, definitely some good points you make. Um, I definitely think that the the bit of the coaching change, obviously Bruce Arian stepping out, um, Todd Bowles, you know, Todd Bowles is a heck of a coach. Yes, he's defensive minded, but the nice thing about having a defensive minded head coach when you're coaching the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is that you have Tom Brady leading your offense, which is practically a coach, a quarterback, a leader. I mean, he's all of these things all bundled in one. So I definitely don't think at this point in Tom Brady's career that having a defensive head coach is really going to hinder his really much about his game. He's still going to be the same Tom Brady we've seen. I mean, is everyone's been saying it for the last five plus years now that, you know, Tom Brady's getting old. Tom Brady's getting old. Tom Brady is old. Tom Brady's old. When is he going to start slowing down? It just doesn't really seem like it's ever going to happen, to be honest. He's obviously not the same Brady that we saw throughout his prime in New England, but even a on his last comeback from retirement, Brett Favre era of Tom of being Tom Brady is still better than most quarterbacks I've ever seen in the NFL anyway. So uh, it's definitely, you know, um, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. I mean, when those two are on the field, 
It's two. It's one of the best wide receiver tandems in the NFL. Obviously, playoff Lenny in the backfield uh, really, really helped uh, Tampa Bay throughout the playoffs, and uh, just giving giving Tom that that solid run option, run game that he can uh, use to to really make the keep the defense honest. You know, as far as NFL, as far as full scope of the NFL, you know, they're going to have a tough schedule. They have a tough schedule this year. They're going to, they got a lot of big games that they've got uh, that, that they're going to have to, you know, really play their best in it and get as many wins as possible because it's not, it's not an easy stretch to say, <clears throat> to say the least for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But as far as the rest of the NFC South goes, which we'll talk about shortly, I mean, I really don't see anyone else even having a sniff at this division other than Tampa Bay. But uh, any other points you want to make on the on the Bucks, or we can move right on on to our next team, which oh, is... me, Pirates. <laughs> All right, well let's let's move on. Let's. Uh, I was gonna say head south, but I guess we're heading north from Tampa to uh, go up to the Bayou, New Orleans Saints. Obviously, um, we've got a couple different question marks for the Saints uh, going into this season. What uh, what's your outlook on New Orleans this year? Well, I wish we I wish we could answer a few of those questions, but we don't know exactly what happens. One, the big question is, how will the Saints replace Sean Payton? Because seemingly for the past, what, 15, 16 years, we know what Sean Payton brought to the city of New Orleans. I mean, Sean Payton and Drew Brees wore New Orleans for 15 years together, and now both of them are gone, so... Goodness knows what happens. Yes, Dennis Allen was the DC for the last several years, but now he's the head coach. And secondly, what's going to happen with James Winston? Because he's coming off a 20 ACL, and now Taysom Hill is back at tight end instead of whatever he was. He was like a half running back, half wide receiver half special teams guy, half tight end, half quarterback. Now he's a full-time tight end. So what happened with James? And third, and maybe most importantly, is does Alvin Kamara play all 17 games? Because A, Kamara's missed a few games the last few years, and B, B, and Cleveland and New Orleans, New Orleans fans are going to know this. There is a strong likelihood Kamara – received some sort of suspension with the, the incident in Las Vegas. So uh, how will the Saints replace their superstar running back be a fascinating question? Yeah, I mean, the, you pretty much nailed it as far as the question marks go. Um, you know, honestly, for me, I, I think the Saints are going to be a little underrated going into this season. I mean, they do have a bunch of question marks. Obviously, the Alvin Kamara is is a big, big, big topic of discussion. Uh, leaving, Losing Sean Payton, who, like you said, has been New Orleans alongside Drew Brees for the, past, for the better half of the last 15 years, practically, since Hurricane Katrina hit. Um, Michael Thomas missed the majority of last season. Is he going to come back? What is he going to be like when he returns to the field? Jameis Winston, you know, you never really know what you're going to get with Jameis other than a handful of crab legs, but I digress. Uh, honestly, as far as a lot of those concerns go, I think Jameis Winston, I mean, he's he's good enough to win you a couple football games. He's not necessarily going to take you to the promised land, but he's also not going to get you a top two draft pick, I don't think. I think Jameis Winston has enough ability and enough capability to be able to get a couple games uh, and, and flip those from an L to a W on your schedule. Not saying that he's going to go on some massive win streak or anything, but he's good enough at the moment for the Saints. Obviously not the quarterback of the future. Uh, another concern, obviously, is the Alvin Kamara situation. You know, there's not a lot you can do about that. I mean, I've been hearing rumblings that they're expecting no short, nothing short of a six-game suspension, which would definitely be a, a, a hurdle that will need to be overcome by the Saints. However, they also have Mark Ingram, who is another New Orleans Saints legend after coming back from his time with the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Oh, no, we'll yeah, it's not, not Mark Ingram. This is not 2000. And this is not, not talking about fantasy. We're talking about, 
We're not talking about fantasy football. We're talking about regular football. Mark Ingram can contribute to the New Orleans Saints offense. He's not going to get you 30 fantasy points a game like Alvin Kamara is going to get you. But Mark Ingram still has enough in him to be at least – He's not obviously they're I'm sure they're gonna sign someone if and when that suspension does go through. They're not gonna just fully re- rely on an on an over the hill Mark Ingram to to completely carry the run, the rushing work in, in New Orleans. But he's also a, a solid enough running back, I think, to really at least be an option and they ha- and, and he's a guy that they have. Another and, and then also, I mean, you gotta look at the talent they had a receiver, bringing in Jarvis Landry is a big addition. That's gonna help Jameis. You know Jarvis Landry likes those underneath routes, those quick slants, get the ball out of Jameis' hands quick, make sure he puts that on the spot, and it's just and it's an easy completion to Landry and let Landry do the rest of the work. Chris Olave, they drafted, and they've got a great secondary with it with uh Tyron Matthew coming in, Marcus May, Marshawn Lattimore, Lattimore. I think it's an underrated New Orleans Saints team they still have consistency at the head coach even though they uh even though they moved on from their head coach they still have a guy who's been in the system who's been in with the organization who knows how it's ran I'm I'm confident that I think I saw that the Saints have an over under of eight eight or so wins this season and I'm, I'm confident taking the over on that I mean I don't think they're necessarily going to be battling Tampa Bay for the for the division but I think that they're definitely gonna at least I think I think an over is definitely a good bet as far as as far as eight wins go. I think I mean if no one's was what eight and nine nine and eight last year with eight million injuries, if they stay healthy, potentially a ten win team. Absolutely. Okay, from one NFC South opponent to another. Of course, we go from the Saints to the Falcons now. Boy. <laughs> Falcon Saints game always intrigues me. Like, it doesn't matter if it's Atlanta or the Superdome. They always play, like, three or four-point games. And uh, when I think of the Falcons, I think of one guy in particular who incites me this year. Can you uh, guess who that said person is? Well, there's really only one member of the Atlanta Falcons I really think is worth anything. And I'm going to guess that you're talking about Kyle Pitts. Mm, yeah. Find me – find me – a more exciting t- young tight end in the league than Kyle Pitts because we all saw what he did at Florida a couple of years ago. All but winning. And uh, last year as a rookie, he signed us with big play opportunities. And uh, obviously in Atlanta now, no Calvin Ridley, no Julio Jones, no Russell Gage. So it's really Kyle Pitts and maybe a Drake London as a s- s- sideshow. In the ATO. Yeah, you know, um, we've talked about the Saints. We've talked about the Bucks. You know, that's pretty much the most of uh, the majority of the uh, bit of excitement, at least as far as I, I, I see looking at the NFC South. The Atlanta Falcons, it's simple. They're in rebuilding mode. Um, first year removed from Matt Ryan, obviously moving on from, from a quarterback who's been the staple and the face of your organization over the better part of a decade is is no easy feat. Uh, it doesn't really necessarily look like the Falcons have put themselves, whether it was the organization making decisions or players of the organization making the decisions. It doesn't seem like the Atlanta Falcons really put themselves in, a, in an opportunity to see, succeed or battle for the, the, the division, a wild card spot, nothing. I mean, uh, yes, Kyle Pitts is, is a beast. He got off to a bit of a slow start last season, but then really hit the scene, of course, against my Miami Dolphins. But, um, you know, I, I Marcus Mariota, Desmond Ritter, I'm not excited about either of those two names. I really don't see a lot coming out of the quarterback, uh, quarterback room. Obviously, the gambling man himself, Calvin Rid- Ridley, has blackjacked himself, <clears throat> has blackjacked himself out of a 2022 NFL season. I just, there's just not a lot. Cordero Patterson is probably the only other ex- somewhat exciting name. Have defenses been able to figure him out? I'm excited. I'm interested to see this year. Interesting fantasy guy, by the way, Cordero Patterson. I mean, obviously he blew up last year, but now that teams kind of know what to expect with him, they're not going to have as much weapons. They don't have Matt Ryan to control the offense. Is he going to be able to have anywhere near the same production as we saw from him last season? Who knows? I'm not sure if I'm comfortable drafting him. It depends on uh, how late uh, he's going to fall. But, you know, just not, not a lot of exciting stuff I see out of the Atlanta Falcons. I see a rebuilding franchise. 
I don't see an answer at quarterback. I see a bunch of question marks, and I think that they're definitely going to be on the bottom half of this division. Is the Atlanta Falcons 2023 and beyond quarterback in the NFL, or is he in college? I mean, I would say 2023 and beyond, i.e. next season, Desmond Ritter might possibly have. I, I don't really have any trust or faith in Marcus Mariota. I think he'll probably start the season. I do not think he will finish the season. I think Ritter will get some opportunity there. How he responds and how he plays when he gets that, when slash if he gets that opportunity is probably going to answer that question, honestly. Uh, if he shows any sort of promise, any sort of sign that he can be capable of, of leading a football team and getting some wins as anything more than a career backup, then they might their, their future NFL quarterback could be on their roster. But if that opportunity, which I do, which I am pretty confident will happen, does not live up to uh, the expectations that Atlanta Falcons fans might have for him, then I would say their their future quarterback would probably most likely be in college. Uh, yeah, I don't think you're that crazy. I don't think you're that crazy. I mean, I like Ritter, but only one quarterback won in the first couple of rounds in Epo's draft. So uh, the NFL GMs thought the same thing I did of these quarterbacks. They're not good. Right. But, uh, that leaves one team left. Uh, we've got uh, the uh, Carolina Panthers. That's right. I almost forgot about. I almost forgot who was left in this division. Uh, you know, a couple decent little talking points on the Carolina Panthers. Nothing too crazy going on. But uh, what, what what do you see from them this season? Obviously, the big question mark is uh, Christian McCaffrey's health. But uh, any anything you want to throw in about that? Well, yeah. I mean, if Christian McCaffrey stays healthy for a seventeen game season. I'm not sure there is a better PPR running back in football because you could get your 100 yards on the ground, 100 yards receiving any day of the week. The only problem is, can he stay healthy? Because the last couple of years, we've seen CMC uh, disappoint, disappoint his fantasy owners. Trust me, I drafted number one in the league. That didn't go well. And somehow won the league. <laughs> how how that happen? That just shows you're a comp- competent fantasy manager. If someone's watching his waiver wire. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, as far as the Carolina Panthers, it's it's. I think Matt Ruley's probably got the hottest seat in in, in the NFL as far as head coaches go. I don't know if you uh, if you would care to agree or disagree with me on one that. Of the, one of the hottest seats in football for sure, at least. Yeah. So, I mean, will he even make it to the end of this season? The way I'm looking at the Carolina Panthers schedule and the way I'm looking at the Carolina Panthers roster and the way I'm looking at the Carolina Panthers injury history, I have a feeling in my gut that if I was throwing the money down, I'd say that he would not be the head coach by the end of by the end of the season I mean you look at their quarterback room you have Sam Darnold and you have Matt Corral don't love either of those guys farther than I can throw them um Sam Darnold I think is a career bust and I have no hope or expectation for him this he was a very uh uh interesting t- uh, piece of conversation we had over lot last off season about how many quarterbacks in the NFL Sam Darnold was better than I said, not many. Um, but I'm just, I just want to tell you, just walk you through the first seven games of the Carolina Panthers schedule really quick. They've got the Browns and the giants, the first two opening weeks toss up, honestly. I mean, the Browns are going to be without Baker, but they still got some weapons on that team. The Giants aren't a very good football team. I think it's that's a pretty even battle between them and Carolina. But after that, they've got the Saints, the Cardinals, the 49ers, the Rams, and the Bucks. If the Carolina Panthers start the season at two or five, that is a that is a good start for them. It just it just doesn't look like that's Panthers not a good start. For the, that's not a good start for Matt Rule because he might be he might be in on the unemployment list. 
And that might be the best thing to happen for the Carolina Panthers. I mean, I just, I'm looking at this team. I just don't see a lot of excitement. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey is the big name you think of. DJ Moore also is a, is a very talented receiver. But with, with a guy like Sam Darnold or an unproven uh, Matt Corral quarterback, how, uh, there's only so much that uh, DJ Moore can do. So I just, I don't see a lot for this Carolina Panthers team. I think that they're going to be battling the uh, Atlanta Falcons for last place in the division. And I think it's more of a looking to the future for your future quarterback. If it's not Matt Corral and definitely looking for your future head coach, if you're a Carolina Panthers fan. I've got a question. How many quarterbacks start this year in Carolina? Because I mean, we know Donna and Matt Corral on Charlotte, but is there a possibility the Panthers may be trained for Baker Mayfield? I think it's absolutely a possibility. I would definitely say, I would be very, very, very comfortable putting my money on three quarterbacks starting a game for the Carolina Panthers this season. I'm sure Darnold's going to get his opportunity, and I'm sure he's going to blow his opportunities. I'm sure Matt Corral will be the next guy in as uh, if and when that situation happens. And I, I mean, anything can happen in the NFL. An injury might knock Matt Corral out for a week, bring in a third guy to start a game. I would say at least – at least two is a lock. Three is a pretty good uh, possibility. Whether they trade for someone like Baker Mayfield or even just, you know, bring in a, a, pack, a practice squad guy due to injury or something like that. I, I think it's definitely two is a lock and, and three is a good bet, in my opinion, on that question. But um, it's time for one of our favorite segments of our little division breakdowns. We've got some trivia. Uh, I know I have a question for you, Dylan, but uh, I know you were thinking of I, you might have had you might have a question for me as well. No, I want to go. I want, you, I want your question. All right, mine's um, mine's definitely a little uh, more simplistic than my previous ones. Uh, unless you don't know a lot about this topic, but I'm sure you will. I want to know, Dylan. And I have a bit of a follow-up, but you don't have to worry about that right now. Can you tell me an Atlanta Falcons career, or, or, I'm sorry, Atlanta Falcons franchise history, not, you don't have to tell me in order, but can you name me their top five franchise leaders in passing yards? Uh, Michael Vick. Not to tell me the order, but you need, I need, I need five of them. Michael Vick. He is on the list. Uh, Manny Ice. That's the easy one. You got three left. Uh, Chris Chandler. That is one. You got two left. You have the three most recent. Frap. Huh. I can oh. give you a hint at any point if you need one. Yeah, I need one. <laughs> one of the quarterbacks... You, there's two left you haven't said. One of them has the same first name as one of the quarterbacks you've already said. Wait, Matt, Michael, and... Oh, God. How well do you know your 1970s and 1980s Atlanta Falcons? You little rat. <laughs> Top five in franchise history. Now you've got me thinking. Matt Schaub is 18th on that list. I know I was, he's played for that team for a long time. I'm surprised he's so well. Well, yeah, he played like three games. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, yeah, that's right. He was 0 3. Because Matt Ryan never missed it. Oh, barely missed yeah. it. <laughs> right. So let's see, you've got Matt Ryan, you've got Chris Chandler, you've got Michael Vick. You give up on the other two? Yes. The one with the same first name is Chris Miller from 1987 to 1993. And the other one you missed was Steve Bartkowski. I knew Steve, Bar I knew Steve Bartkowski. I should have gotten him. I thought you, I thought you were going to get him, but... um. I do have a quick little follow-up before we move to your question, just because I found this very interesting, which is the reason why I picked this in the first place. Obviously, Michael Vick is um, one of the, the most notable Atlanta Falcons quarterbacks. 
of those top five, of those top five all-time Atlanta Falcons passing leaders, where does Michael Vick sit in that list? Hmm. I think he's got to be fourth on the list. Very close, but he is actually fifth on the list oh, of yeah. Atlanta Falcons franchise passing leaders. I was surprised. To, I was surprised to hear that. Uh, Matt well, Ryan is well, yeah, because smaller. Michael Vick ran so much. I know, I know, he ran so much, but he was still. I mean, he was an electric quarterback. Of course, a lot of that came with his ability to run. However, I mean, he was still. I mean, he was still a great quarterback as well. So I was. I was just surprised to see him at fifth. I thought he was going to be a little higher than that. But Matt Ryan, Steve Barkowski, Chris Miller, Chris Chandler, and Michael Vick is the top five Falcons passing leaders. Okay, uh, my question involves Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Bucks Super Bowls, but not a question. But not a player it involves a country music superstar. Which country music star was at both of Tam the Tampa Bay Bucks Super Bowl wins? Which country music superstar was at both of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowl wins? Well, I know their first one was against the Raiders in 2002. So it's got to be a country music star who was relevant enough to be at the Super Bowl back 20 years ago. And then what? They won the Super Bowl two years ago? Yeah. So 20, 20, 18 years. I'm going to get, I don't know anything about country music, Dylan. I'm going to guess a country music star who seems like they've been on the map forever. Tim McGraw? No. Country music superstar. Superstar. Dolly Parton. No. You, you called her now. Tim McGraw. Was warmer than Dolly Parton. Okay, um, I can't believe this turned into a country music trivia question. This is this is my kryptonite here, Dylan. Um, well, you gave me a seventy Falcons question. At least it was about quarterbacks. <laughs> Shania Twain. Okay, I feel like Dolly Parton. Oh wait. I mean, I guess. All right. I was never in a, I couldn't even, I didn't even have another country music star to guess. So, uh, Shania Twain, interesting. Was she, what was she, the halftime show or was she just in the I stands? Or, was, where, where'd you even find this question? I remember, I remember because Shania was at a fan from the Super Bowl in Tampa and she performed in San Diego. Well, now you have the ultimate. Tampa Bay Buccaneers bar trivia, I guess. Any country music fans and any Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans out there, you are welcome for Dylan's uh, little piece of, uh, of trivia nugget for your uh, Shania Twain Tampa Bay Buccaneers trivia. For your, for your Shania Twain Tampa Bay Buccaneers theme trivia nights, Dylan has all, the, uh, has all the questions for you. But no, that's, it's interesting. It's an interesting one. I, uh, you definitely stumped me there. Yeah, so obviously, think of it from the veteran standpoint. Would you agree the Bucks are the favorite to win the NFC South? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, I do like the Saints. I think they're under un, underrated this season, but they're gonna have a lot of work to do to be able to to uh, keep up with that Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. Are the Bucks in the Super Bowl bubble? I think they're on the bubble. I don't think they are necessarily an NFC favorite. I don't think that they're ne necessarily a Super Bowl favorite, but I do think they are on the bubble. I would not be surprised to see them in the NFC Championship game. I, I think Tampa's in the picture, but if you ask me in terms of NFC teams, I think the Rams are better. Particularly, I, particularly, I don't think the Bucks match up well against Aaron Donald. Tom Brady does not like pressure up the middle. Well, he does. And be honest, I'm not sure the Bucs match up well against Cooper Cup because seemingly Cooper Cup could have his way against them. And 
look out for Allen Robinson this year because Allen Robinson was misused in Chicago. I'm not sure it'll be you if the Bucks can stop Cup and Robinson this year. I completely – sorry, I just looked out on my phone. There's breaking basketball news right now. Kevin Durant has requested a trade out of Brooklyn, but just happened to catch my eye. But, no, I, I definitely agree. I think the Rams you ha- the Rams have to be the favorites as far as the NFC going in uh, to this season. I do think that Tampa Bay is going to put on a good showing, but, um, you know, I, I don't think we're necessarily going to see a Super Bowl winner from the NFC South this season. So uh, thanks for top, for hopping on, Alex. Uh, the NFC South has provided many highlights, and we'll see what it provides this week. Can't wait to talk next week because it's my division in the NFC South. So you know what that means. That means it's all your show next week, Dylan. I will. Uh, I'll tune in with the rest. No, I'm just kidding. I can't wait to talk about the NFC South. Uh, obviously, it'll be exciting talking about your boys. And, uh, you know, the rest, of, the rest of the AFC South game down there. So thanks for having me, Don. It's been a pleasure as always. And fins up.